Hey everyone, welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So I went into Vault of Stars with a bunch of friends and we tested out a whole bunch of these different companions from the Succumpus to Regis to even the Mystagog. And we even went and tested a few of the companions, the top ones in single target, the boss fights. We had like the Pseudo Dragon, the Honey Badger, the Gith, and even the Armored Orc Wolf. Now I'd like to give a massive thank you to those guys who helped me out in these runs and these testings. So just yesterday I posted a video on the Miskagok and it was dealing over 100,000 encounter DPS with its power against 4 dummies. That was pretty nuts. But then we also have the Succumpus, Regis who are all top contenders at dealing lots of damage within AoE when you have lots of enemies to hit. And then in single target we have the Pseudo Dragon and the Honey Badger being the top ones there. And we also have the Gith along with it, both being very good in single target and AoE. So I've made some charts to go and clearly show their damage output in the certain phases. So initially we have this first phase where it's going through these areas, killing all these enemies, and they're generally pretty spread out. So this was the result that we got from testing these five different companions. You can see the Gith Yankee was doing absolutely terrible. Its spin is a pretty small area and it does take quite a while for it to actually start spinning and therefore it really couldn't catch up with any of the other companions since everything's dead just way too quickly. Same with the Wayward Wizard, same issue as you saw in the last video, he stands too far away while he does his steal time, his slow ability. So he was only there at 6000 encounter DPS. Then we had Regis, his whirlwind of blades is good but it's just not that good. And we have the Miskagog with its steal time, a little bit better than Regis since its base damage is a bit higher on its steal time or slow. But we did then have Succumpus at being the best since she can just deal massive amounts of damage with her deadly kiss and she does it as soon as she enters the fight and the cone for it is ginormous. So then we go to the second area which is after the first boss when you're in this forest where you have to protect Lumi. So again testing the Gith way down there at 4000, Wayward Wizard not too great neither was the Miskagog. What we had at the top there was the Succumpus, even outdoing Regis by double the amount of damage. The first time I went and tested Succumpus, we had her even below Regis. She was around 20,000. However, by positioning Succumpus on the outside of the group of mobs that are going to spawn, you can then have her do the deadly kiss and affect all of the enemies. And she was doing up to 50 thousand encounter dps against all of those enemies and that was then between each of the areas it was absolutely insane definitely beats regis there then finally we go to the maze or the labyrinth and you can see the succumpus again was dealing very good because its area is just so big when the enemies are spread out that doesn't particularly matter however there is one catch Ideally, you want to run Succumpus as a ranged DPS player because your companion will try to stick beside you when there's no targets to hit and if there are targets to hit, it's going to move away from you to the targets and then use its area. So if you're initially standing on the outside of a bunch of mobs, then you'll have your Succumpus deal that deadly kiss and hit all of the enemies. But if you're amongst all of the mobs, like with a melee DPS, if you're a rogue, you want to be right in the middle. If that is the case, the Succumbus really won't deal a lot of damage because its area is only a cone and if you're in the middle, you can only get one slice of that circle. You can't affect everything around you like Regis could. So then we go to the first boss of Vault of Stars, the Royal Gardener. And it's a mix of both AoE and single target with the boss phasing a lot. So companions here generally have a bit of trouble keeping up. So we can see these are our results and the Honey Badger and the Gith were doing the top damage there. Something I hadn't realized but the Honey Badger actually has some AoE damage, albeit it's such a small area that it only really showed up 
while we were testing it against this boss. Since the enemies, if your tank is good and has aggro on the enemies, it's going to bring all of those adds right beside the boss, and then the honey badger can hit them as well. So it was dealing just as much damage as the Gith Yankee, who could do its spin and affect all those mobs at the same time as well. The pseudo dragon, the Miskagog, and the wayward wizard were just far behind there because they just aren't good at that single target damage. The pseudo dragon can do a lot of damage over time but because the boss is phasing a lot and there's lots of ads he can get distracted you can see his damage was only over 20,000 there the miskagog was just over 20,000 since it could hit a lot of those ads but its single target is not not really consistent for those boss fights and same with the wayward wizard but even worse so because it would just stand really far away and we go to the second boss and we got pretty decent results here on the companions and the main reason is the boss never phases the companions will always have the time to hit the boss for the entire duration of the fight and this is where the pseudo dragon shines it can always hit its target so it can rack up all that damage over time we went and tested the armored orc wolf as well it does have a lot of burst damage but just not as good as the pseudo dragon with consistent damage and the gift was the same there as well and then we had the honey badger who i believe would just take quite a lot of damage from within those ice areas whenever the boss didn't move that quickly and else he would lose 20% of his health and once he's below 80% he basically loses half of his damage because when his hit points are above 80% he deals double damage and the Kuatua was just a random test to see was it performing any higher than I had got on the dummy and it doesn't seem to be the case still only just over 30,000 encounter DPS there. Now these damages are higher because it's in a dungeon where we have artifact calls so they can deal that good bit more damage during that short windows whenever we do our mount powers and our dailies and those encounters which cause the target to take increased amounts of damage. Then we go to the third boss and this boss again companions struggle a lot because they take a lot of damage and the boss moves a lot. You can see the honey badger was struggling there I assume again same problem takes a lot of damage it's damaged then it's just halved. The gift I guess just not being able to keep up with the boss and the boss being able to get melted like really quickly so you need lots of burst damage and this is where we can see the armored orc wolf actually beat the pseudo dragon and the reason is when you test the armored arc wolf on a dummy you can see its consistent damage over time is not great the only time it does lots of damage is in that short window when it has 10 seconds and its bleed will basically double proc so in conclusion we can see that it's really varied. My recommendations for an AoE companion from my test results would be if you're ranged DPS or you can make sure she's positioned on the outside of a group of mobs before she does her kiss, take the second bus. Otherwise, as a melee DPS, you could safely run with Regis or the Mystagog. As for single target, we can see the pseudo dragon will come out on top in a fight where it can reliably attack the target for long durations. So this would be like the second boss within the Vault of Stars. When you need like burst damage, the armored orc wolf can be even slightly better than the pseudo dragon. And as for the gith, well, it is pretty good within AoE and single target. It just needs the right situations. For example, the mobs will have to be grouped up quite heavily and you'll also then have to make sure that the boss will stick around long enough for it to get its full spinning strike off. Now keep in mind with these companions I have no guarantee that they're going to stay the way they are. This is their current state and I've just done my best to test out how they actually perform within the Vault of Stars dungeon practically compared to my dummy tests. Now these prices people are going to go and jack them up to all hell and if you don't already have one I do not really suggest spending the astral diamonds to go and try obtain one of them. Sure they may be the best but there's plenty of other companions that can do their job just fine. You don't need the best of the best to be able to complete 
all of the content that we currently have available to us. For new players, I highly recommend just use a companion you already have. You want to prioritize gaining those good equip powers before getting a companion that can deal lots of damage. Prioritize your own damage first. So again, I'd like to give a massive thank you to all of my channel members for helping me keep my channel going. And if I presented as well, consider leaving the video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.